revolution, start a revolution, it's time for restitution, no more persecution, set these words in motion, and live in full devotion, take part in contribution, love is the solution, this is a revelation, start a revolution, it's time for restitution, no more persecution, set these words in motion, and live in full devotion, take part in contribution, love is the solution, we don't need no guns, we don't need no violence, our voices will be heard, we will not stand in silence, make no mistake, we are awake, we about to shake them till we break them like an earthquake, this is our world today. I take complex from the oppression by questioning the game. Believe it all that I've been sold is like a bullet to the brain. I dance for the hunger, I sing for those in pain. I praise all those who suffered and I free myself from pain. Yeah, music is the movement spread across this flame. Made from particles of universal truth, we are the same. We are one, connected by the sun And the stars is what we are Lost in the void of blackness afar Into the depths of your soul Don't let them take control now They're gonna eat you whole This is a revelation, the start of revolution It's time for restitution, no more persecution Set these words in motion and live in full devotion Take part in contribution, love is the solution This is a revelation, the start of revolution for restitution, no more persecution. Set these words in motion and live in full devotion. Take part in contribution, love is the solution. I watch the fat cats feast off the backs of the people as we struggle just to eat, preaching world domination. A slave the population where the only option given is passive participation. Said, Who am I? Where do I belong? We search for the answers. Like we lost the confusion. Searching for illusion. We never come to realize love is a solution. All we need is love. Love will the world. A revelation, start a revolution, it's time for restitution, no more persecution, set these words in motion, and live in full devotion, take part in contribution, love is the solution, this is a revelation, the start a revolution, it's time for restitution, no more persecution, set these words in motion, and live in full devotion, take part in contribution, love is the solution. Thank you so much, once again I'm Q Violin a.k.a. Quetzal Guerrero, and thank you so much for being a part of this incredible event. It's perfect. Bobby, I'm going to turn it back to you. Okay. Uh, well, that was just incredible and um, just really filled with this energy and pulling us all together and so compelling. Did you did you all feel that as well? I mean, I, I, he's not here, but I just wanna clap anyway and just say thank you for sharing that beautiful, beautiful music with us. And I'm really excited to introduce our, um, our I, I was gonna say speaker, but that doesn't feel right. So I'm gonna introduce um, Rulan Tengen uh, tonight. And so some of the questions that, that she had for us um, was, how do you inhabit your body? In what ways does, it use, does its use connect you to the world that surrounds you, the people, the earth, the sky? How might you inhabit it more intentionally? Rulan Tangan has been exploring these questions for years, and tonight we get to join her on that journey. So she is an internationally accomplished dance artist choreographer and director with over three decades of experience in multiple movement genres. Rulan is the founding artistic director and choreographer of Dancing Earth, a company that creates contemporary dance and related arts through indigenous and intracultural relationships centered in ecological and cultural diversity. 
Her work explores movement as an evolving language of global indigenous and intercultural relation building rooted in an inclusion of diverse cosmologies from her own experience and those of the artist with whom she co-creates. So please join me in welcoming Rulan. And Rulan, will you turn your volume up just a little more? I got some uh, good feedback from folks saying they'd want to be able to hear you even, okay. even more. Can you hear me now? How's that, everyone? Is that good or a little bit louder? Go ahead and talk. We'll let you know if we need you to put it up again. OK. Well, um, gosh. What is a revolution without uh, sound and dance? It's not a revolution at all. So I um, lift up Seed and Spark for bringing a true revolution that's fully embodied, multi-dimensional. Um, I'm really excited because I love these uh, the words that uh, kind of lured me in about um, imagining uh, the reimagining of our story, new story together, in which our I think the way you said it was one way, but the way we say it in Dancing Earth is in which our teachers are no longer human. They're the beyond human world as well. Um, so I'm gonna give a few words just out of protocols. Although what really happens when we first meet each other is if we were in person, we'd be smelling. We wouldn't be conscious of it, but we've been learning about each other through smell. Um, basically trying to assess like, who's gonna try to eat me? And um, who should I be, you know, running from or trying to, you know, it's a very primal thing. And the other thing that happens is we're actually met looking at how we move and how we how we dance to assess assess who we are. That's before we even hear our fancy titles or our names. So my name is Rulan, and um, my fancy title, which comes from this, you know, this sort of um, societal world, is a founding artistic director. But if I'm to come to the core of what that really is, it means I'm a dream visioner. And I think you all are dream visioners. So I'm just going to invite you to go to the place where you dream from, which might be your head or your gut or your heart or your spine. And just shut your eyes and acknowledge yourself as being a dream visioner. And then you can gently open your eyes. I'm currently dancing in a production that's on tour. And my, my role in that is a, it's like a spider. And so I'm also a dream weaver. And I think we all might be dream weavers stretching across the planet. So I'm gonna invite you all to just reach out your arms from your belly and reach them out into any direction. Oh, that feels good. Uh, to acknowledge us all as dream weavers. And part of this is to sort of like ease ourselves in because I think one of the functions of uh, colonization, oppression, capitalization, is to dis, uh, encourage many people to be disembodied. So probably everyone, many, many people I know, including dancers who dance in my company, when I met them, they might say, I'm not a dancer because we've been programmed to believe that only certain people can be dancers, certain bodies, certain ages. I actually don't believe that's the case. Um, you know, there's folks in wheelchairs, there's folks with, um, you know, various abilities, but if we are, if we are alive, um, we are in motion. And I know this because I founded Dancing Earth after a battle with cancer. And one day I was looking down in the midst of that and I wasn't sure if I was alive or dead, but I saw that my uh, chest and belly were rising and falling. That's how I knew I was alive. So I'm just encouraging you all to embrace being alive um, so that you can move with me. And I can't see you, I have my reading glasses, you know, I, don't worry, no judgment, turn off your cameras. A lot of people dance better with no cameras on. And dance, I think it's movement. I mean, we all heard a beat just now. As humans and as beyond humans, seeds, moon, water, everything on this earth is actually looking to unite through certain rhythms. That's why the plants grow with the moon. But I've been talking enough. Um, I just want to say my uh, ancestors from this side come from across the Atlantic in different parts of Europa. My ancestors uh, from my mother's side come from across the Pacific place that's called the Luzon Island. And I make my home here uh, in both Tewa lands that are more commonly called Santa Fe and Olone lands that are more commonly called Yelamo or San Francisco. I've got my foot in both, believe it or not. So that's my formal, you know, short formal introduction. Now we can get to the movement. That's what you've all been waiting for. 
Okay, so I'm encouraging you to sit or stand, whatever feels comfortable to you. You'll see me do both so that you can see that um, one is not better than the other. And I like to start with this idea of um, a reciprocity, a giving and receiving, because that's hopefully what's going to happen today. I'm going to be giving a lot because I love, I love being able to participate with you here and hopefully I'll receive. So when we, we can think of breath as a way to understand reciprocity. We give, our hands can go out, and when we receive, our arms can come in. Exhale, inhale. When we exhale, we're giving carbon dioxide. When we inhale, we're receiving oxygen. Giving carbon dioxide, receiving oxygen. So if we are even increasing our breath capacity just a little bit on this call, we're actually going into better relationship with the trees and plants of this planet because they create that oxygen for us and we give back carbon dioxide. So you don't have to go to my pace. I'm probably going fast because I'm like excited, but if you want to go slower, you can. Again, thinking of that receiving and giving. In fact, there's many things that you've received in order to be here today. Just having a computer and Wi-Fi is a huge privilege. Being able to take that time tonight to give yourself this time to move with others and come into rhythm with beings from across the, certainly across this nation. Uh, it represents a, a lot that we, you received to get here. And um, you're giving so much just by your presence. Some of you wrote in your intentions over there on the chat, your intentions of why you are here. I mean, I could do this on my own, down the, you know, in the Whole Foods uh, shopping aisle, just dancing around by myself. But it's kind of more wonderful to do it together. So this is our giving and receiving, and our arms show us the cycle. You can call this the cycle of sustainability or regeneration. Um, that breath shows us that cycle. So thank you for that. So the next thing we will do is extend our hands. I saw that some people are joining from the East Coast. Some are joining from the West Coast. So we can imagine, really use your imagination to break out of this box that you're in, imagine this huge rainbow circle, and let yourself lean from one side to the other because you're actually getting a bit of an opening of your ribs, which allow you to breathe more. As you breathe more, you move into more relationship with your plant relatives, our teachers who are beyond human. From this reach, we're coming together. So we can slide our fingers up and down. And what we're experiencing is a gentle touch of connection. For some of us, we've been in isolation and in lockdown for a very long time. And so this is maybe the one time today or this month that we're experiencing connection, respectful, um, that sensory pleasure, of feeling good. I really love these kind of uh, gatherings of academics, of uh, activists who work so hard, you know, perhaps educators, uh, people who work so, so hard for change in this world to remind us of letting our bodies feel good while we do that. Often we're working so hard that that's not always seeming like an option. From this rubbing together, we're going to create a little spark by creating heat with our hands. This magic is we're literally creating heat here. And then we're going to let the heat of the hands come just one inch, perhaps, from our body so we can feel the heat of our hands. That's actual energy. At all times, we're giving and exchanging energy. Our trees have taught us that. And now we're experiencing it. So part of it is creating that heightened sense of energy and then that the sense of feeling. It's harder when you... You know, it's easier skin to skin, but we're trying to enhance our ability to feel through our senses. And as we do so, we're moving our hands up and down just outside of our body. And what we're be, going to be trying to do is build our energy, build that heat through our whole body so that we can reach out of this room, um, reach our messages, our, 
our vision, our imagining proceeds and spark to, um, to, to transform. But first, we're going to enjoy some gentle rest with the palms on our eyes. And then just a, a long cleansing movement. So we can go over the back of our head, down our neck, down our arms. We can come from our throat down the front of our body. All the way down to your feet if you can touch them. You can do this sitting down as well. Just a sort of check-in of our bodies. It's a way to acknowledge our bodies. And it's like a form of cleansing. It's letting go of anything in this day. It's cleansing that off. So we've gone from heat to water. And now we're going to go to this... Uh, like a little hummingbird. It's going to be like a little flicker of our arms. It's just creating a tapping. It's sort of awakening and enlivening. A little bit of joy. Just feeling that slight tapping on our body. It's sort of encouraging our body to be able to feel. Um, sometimes if there's people that are quite disengaged, if you just touch them, they'll go out. Um, because we're so uh, not used to embodiment. So, we're enjoying this little hummingbird wing, wakening up our ability to, to feel, to move with a sense of joy. I like to get right underneath um, the neck. Uh, sometimes that's called the animal brain or the primitive brain. Like many things that are called animal or primitive, it's actually very intelligent and you know very helpful. And you know, it's nice to speak well. So I'm gonna say thank you for that, um, for those senses, those nerves there. Um, so we've gone to the next element is going to be rocks. So we're going to take our hands like rocks. This is all to feel good, to put us in our bodies to feel good. We're going to take these, maybe it's your palm, and we're going to just allow a little massage in our temples. Maybe you want to have tiny rocks with your fingertips. Just uh, This is our hot stone massage, people. All of that happening for free tonight. So getting into... Our facial features, our, our, our brain, our eyes, our ears, our nose, and our mouth all work so hard. And we're going to move all of that wonderful capacity through our whole body. So perhaps our neck can see. Oh, we've got a lot in the neck. Perhaps our heart is going to be able to um, have a sense of smell. Perhaps our elbows are going to be able to hear. So we're inviting ourselves into a multi-sensory intelligence through our whole body. So you can make a massage or using a little rock to roll down or just um, sort of like circle into the muscles. So this is to sort of melt away the stresses of the day and help our body to feel good before we start our moving. Oh, I think my track has been on repeat for quite a while. Let's see if it'll go forward. Keep going, please. have these little elemental touches and I'm going to see if with your eyes shut maybe this is a good one sitting down you can feel your hips rocking your ribs above your hips perhaps not in front or behind your hips and your head my head tends to be lower in front of my hips so I'm going to see if I can feel what it feels like from the inside for that head to sort of float above the ribs above the hips and this is my inner landscape, just checking in with how I feel. And then we slowly open my eyes and then we get to the outer landscape. So for me, I'm actually going to come off of my chair now and just have my knees bent. And I'm going to 
look with my eyes. As I said, my eyes do a lot of work, but my, sorry, my fingers are gonna be my eyes right now. So I'm gonna do a little scan around this room. This is my outer landscape. It's gonna be very slow. My knees are not twisting, but my belly is. I'm sort of wringing out my belly as my spine twists around, seeing with my fingers, and I'm noticing this room. I've been in here for hours, and I didn't notice today, like, oh, there's some beautiful tree out this window. I see some photos of my relatives, and it's making me smile. A lot of times I complain about being in a box and in this Zoom room, but I'm actually quite happy to have this protection of this, the walls around me. I'm happy to have a room at all. There's been times in my life where I didn't have that. So I'm just looking with compassion and gratitude around me, noticing this uh, landscape that's around me. And I'm noticing there's wood in the room. And I'm remembering that even though it looks like a, a wooden desk, it was once a tree. So if I've keeled away to its origin story, I'm actually connecting with all kinds of elements of nature, even this plastic that's around me and this light bulb. One time, came, there was a source material that came from the depths of this earth. So I'm not uh, looking with any judgment, I'm just taking it all in and taking it in as beauty. The next level of this is to look beyond the four walls. So this house has probably been here for five years. Maybe the house you're in has been there for 20, 50, 150 years. And will it still be there in 150 years? We don't know. But we know that what is beyond these walls, wherever you are, it's always been there and it always will be. Whether you are close to oceans, orchards, grasslands, deserts, can you tune your imagination and your memory together? What is actually around you? What is to your east, to your west, to your north, to your south? Can you remember it? And if you, sometimes the Im imagination overcomes memory and you're actually seeing a landscape that you love that is imprinted inside of you and it's always with you. We have our inner landscape of how we feel from inside of our body and these multiple layers of this outer landscape. And now just a little playful shaking. And we invite us now that we have the place inside of us and the place that we're in to allow your feet to be on the floor. I can do that with my, if I come further to the edge of my chair, because my legs are short. Um, to get my foot fully on the floor. I can also do it standing up and I'm going to do it quite wide because the image that I'm invoking right now is a mountain. Wide feet spread. I'm going to feel the weight drop down through my hips and I'm going to engage my kneecaps so that I can drive my full foot down to the floor like arrows. I'm really rooting myself. I'm feeling my legs strong like the rocks of a mountain. And then I'm just testing the surfaces of the feet on the floor. So I'm going to let myself rock and ripple so I can feel that ball of the foot and the toe pads. And then I'm going to give myself a little hug. I'm going to sneak in a massage there with my shoulder blades. And I'm going to lift up my elbows to the sky. So when, if I stand sideways, you see it's a slight arch. I'm supporting the back of my neck, so I'm not scrunching at the back of my neck, but it's a nice sense of stretch. And I'm going to call that our mountain. You can see in this video monitor, I've got a peak of my mountain. It's like a triangle. And then I'm just going to drop and soften my knees, soften my head. I'm going to do it one more time. Finding that mountain. And soften one more time. This time when I the mount, look up to the mountain peak of my elbows, my eyes and my heart are showing me what's overhead. These are the stars, the stars that seed and spark got their name from. So I'm just going to reach up. And then I'm going to bring those stars right down all the way to my feet. They're going to float down. And then they're going to come up my body, meaning I'm touching my body and coming up, reaching back up to those stars. So this is a reminder 
It's almost built into our body movements. All of life on Earth came from stars, dying stars that became carbon. Dropping down, you might stretch out the back of your legs. So all of life on Earth is made from carbon, which means what I'm touching right now, my body, and everything I saw in this room, the desk, the photographs, everything that was beyond this room, mountains, is all made from carbon. So we are all related. We are all stardust. One more time up the body, acknowledging yourself as stardust, and just bring your hands right in front of you so you can see your hands have an imprint. They look like stars. They are our reminders that we are stars, that we are connected. And what our hands want to do is um, kind of express physics to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So this intelligence is in our body. We stretch our fingers very wide, and what do they want to do next? They want to just melt and become little seeds. Well, I guess you're, you're called seeds and sparks. So these are sparks, these are stars. I call this exercise seeds and stars with dancing earth. Stars that are connected, and then seeds that hold the potential for all of life in that tight darkness. Our hands are also teaching us about the balance, the balance of being active, vibrant, reaching towards each other with mission, with messaging, with purpose, and then the time to rest. Now, I'm trying to learn this for myself because I tend to get so excited and work so much, I don't probably rest as much as people think I should. So I'm gonna learn this from my hands. Opening to extend and closing to rest. Now, the beautiful thing is we might be able to take this action and apply it to the whole body. So again, with my legs wide, my arms wide, and I'm going to do this seated first. Let's see how it looks seated. Legs wide, arms wide, and then I'm going to curl around my umbilical cord. I'm just going to curl down and feel that seed potential. So when you came here today, some of you wrote into the chat your intentions. I feel like seeds are that potential for any possible intention, limitless possibility. So this movement is fairly simple. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. But what you want to feel is this, how you dream up. As Mark said, imagining the new stories for humanity with nature as our guide. And then extending. That's, that's the discipline of practicing for your imagination Thanks. to become movement, to become embodiment, that is what manifesting a vision is about. It starts with a little spark of an idea, and then you have to you know, use every way you can to bring it to reality. Right now, we're taking our imagination and we're bringing it to the reality through our bodies. Our bodies are sacred parts of this ecosystem, but our own body, our ability to move and become our imagination. This is like a wonderful little sketch of bringing revolution, bringing vision to life. All right, so that's our seed and our star. What else do we have? So I'd like to return to our mountain stance. And this time we're gonna hold our shoulders. It has a sense of hug and embrace again, an embrace of humans. Our own humanity is a sacred part of this ecosystem. Hard to remember sometimes with humanity, but tonight we're in that sacred um, momentum. We've had that extension and that curling in, and this is a beautiful time now, standing or sitting, to, I'm gonna let my head dribble. For you in the East Coast, it's like a fiddle head fern. I'm gonna lean back, I'm gonna let my chin come down, melting towards my knees. And then at my knees, I'm going to arch up with an inhale. So it's like a little stretch curving our back. And inhaling. So it's an extended inhale and exhale. As we remember, we learn from the trees how to be in relationship by giving carbon dioxide with our exhale and receiving oxygen with our inhale. Meanwhile, we're opening up our spine. A lot of trauma that happens to our bodies and even ancestrally to our ancestors' bodies can get lodged 
any a cellular level and connecting into the neuro neuro system into the spine so when we sort of soften the spine and iron things out I feel like we're moving through different ancestral traumas and just kind of releasing them because it feels good it feels good to our spine now what if we were to reverse it and I'll stand up so you can see a standing version we could arch forward and then when we reach our bottom, we bend our knees, the head goes towards the center, and you keep the head close to you. Exhale, the head is far away from the tail, and then exhale, it curls like a little, little seed, extending and curling. Beautiful. So we've had the sort of front and back of the spine, but our, our spine has the side to side. So if we want to reach. First our rib, then our elbow, shoulder, arm. We, we showed this gesture before, reaching out all the way to the East Coast, to the Atlantic, and then rippling now to the other side. So we have done it as a simple reach. And now, what if we did not have use of our hands? How could our ribs reach? If we weren't able to use our arms, could we still reach from Atlantic to Pacific? coast to coast, just using those ribs. What we're trying to do is extend our capacity for breath. Our lungs are this beautiful container. So we're gonna make a circle with our, our ribs. Our ribs contain our lungs and our heart. So we're just opening that container so we can have a big heart and a big capacity for breath. And our heart, because of that heartbeat, it reminds us of how all life forms on earth actually want to find various rhythms to connect into. The moon connects to the water. Plants also connect to the moon. They connect to the sun. So they're looking for what to be in rhythm with. That's what our heart reminds us of. And then our lungs, it's that breath that connects us to that tree world. Beautiful. So back to that mountain pose, wide stance, making a triangle, connecting through our um, our shoulder blades, giving ourselves a little hug, coming back to that mountain. Now, at the top of the mountain, soften. At this time in winter, you're probably near some mountains and there's probably snow on the top. That snow represents the sacred life force of water. And at this time of the year, that water has become snow crystals, beautiful, unique, individualized crystals. And if we have a memory of the springtime, at the springtime, the sun comes out. So here we are with our elbows up. You're going to let your left arm, the side of your heart, drop down. And just let it drop down. And then the right arm is going to circle the head. And your head can kind of follow that circle. So imagine your head now like the sun, the top of the mountain. And that sun at the top of the mountain is going to cause a melt. So this is a bit like a yoga pose where you hold your ear and then you just let your head drop so it's like sleep down into that arm and this is going to reverse it represent the melting so you can feel from your ear trickling down your neck the resources the sacred resource of life that had been crystals at the top of the mountain are now flowing down from the top to the bottom meaning it goes all the way down to the soil to nourish the future plants instead of being hoarded at the top of the mountain and dropping down. So this imagery reminds us of how important it is to share resources, the most sacred resource of all being water. Coming to the top of the mountain, as we do this, our heart lifts, we support the back of the neck, we see the stars past our elbows, we let the right arm drop down and then the left will circle Reminding us of the season that is ahead. After winter comes the spring. The spring brings that warming sun to the top of that mountain. And then those resources, those sacred crystals come down the mountain, trickling down from the ear to the neck, to the shoulder, to the elbow, to the wrist. Each one sort of rippling and then just off the fingertips, boop. That water comes to the soil to create the growth of the new plants, the plants which feed humans, 
which feed animals, which feed our winged. All of this because of the sharing of resources from the top. Coming back down. So water teaches us so much. <laughs> um, in our bodies, we learn a lot by, just now we're going shoulder, elbow, wrist. Shoulder, elbow, wrist. And if we were to do both sides at once, we notice something, which is that that river, that water, is somewhat like a bird wing. So birds kind of pick up one knee and the other, and that kind of feels good on my hips right now. You might want to bring your foot off the floor. I'm able to do that without falling down today. If you're not able to do that, if you're sitting down, you could just go to the tip of your toe as we find that bird. And our head can move because head and eyes of birds, they're looking, you know? All right, so this is actually quite tiring. It makes us have respect for our, our bird relatives. There's something that I learned about human migrations, and all of us have um, histories of migration that come from our ancestors. Our migratory ancestors would follow the birds. If they could see the birds, they would try to keep up with their direction because if they followed the birds, they would find water, and water is life. So something that dancers find through our bodies is, as birds look for water, how amazing their, their wings also reflect the water. Now this happens also with trees. So imagine your leg is the tree. I'm gonna do this mm, sitting down for now. Our tree, if it was rooted, the roots, they're actually in curvy linear lines because why? They're looking for water. So as they look for water, they become water. Let's try the other knee in and out. So just sliding in and out, making a little spiral. So these are the spirals, or I'd say it's like a yeah, spiral. So maybe our arms can reflect that spiral. This is fun to do sitting down or standing up. They both come in and then they turn over. So they're actually making little figure eights. We've gone from a ripple to a figure eight. A figure eight, if you cut it in half, would be a spiral. So let's have two knees go in one direction along with one hand and the other down. So I actually learned this from a, a bean, a beanstalk. So there's times when my dance company of Dancing Earth hasn't had any funding and we were hungry, but we wanted to still dance. So we made friends with farmers. And those farmers taught us, um, you know, this incredible graciousness. They gave us food, squash, zucchini, pumpkins, corn. And then the farmer was telling me, he was telling me about the corn. It kind of looked like this our mountain pose. He was saying, telling me how strong and upright the corn was. So we could stand up and the corn uh, stalks, they were very strong. It's very symmetrical, very strong. And they're stood in the center and then the beans grow with them. They wrap around that corn. And so we plant them together. Corn and beans. Sometimes they're called sisters. The third sister is often called squash. And then he showed me with his arms, he said, they've got leaves that uh, provide shade on the ground and that keeps the water in. And so we plant them all together, not a monocrop, but one, two, three, all of them together. So those are sometimes called three sisters in certain parts of this land. Um, and those are movements that I learned from the corns, the beans and the squash, and they're very healthy for my spine and they've got a nice diversity. So I learned that twisted movement of water from the beans as they spiral around. So um, one other movement, uh, you know, we were doing that ripple, that rip we can find the ripple with our knees here, just finding that ripple with our arms. So we're, and I can, when I do that, I start to find it in my spine. And it's just a reminder that we are 70 to 80% water. I'm saying 70 because I live in the desert. And so one of the teachings that has been shared with me comes from Anishinaabe grandmothers who have committed themselves to protection of the Great Lakes. And they said, we have to remember the sacredness of the waters of our body as well as of the planet. 
And this was told Yay. to me many, many years ago. I was asked to make dances about it. I was given permission from certain grandmothers to do so. And I feel like I'm learning that, continue to learn that, what that means all the time in my life, over and over. Um, um, a deeper and deeper awareness of the sacredness of the water. Okay, well, um, I think I want to uh, bring our hands down to scoop that sacred water all around us. And then back to our Zoom world of connection between the Atlantic, the Pacific, the Great Lakes, just uh, rippling towards each other. And then remembering ourselves as trees of life, reaching down to our roots of our feet, and then coming up, extending our arms like branches. We can think of that exhale of giving back to the earth as we ripple up as these channels of water, these sacks of air between the underground and the sky world, just like trees reaching up to the sky, the sun and the moon. So I thank you so much for joining me in this practice today of, um, you know, some of the things that I've learned from our beyond human relatives um, during this, my time on this earth. And um, I'm so grateful to be able to share just a touch of uh, some of the methodology that uh, nature has shared with me, as well as, you know, there's certain native elders that have taken me under my, their wing and asked me to translate some of these um, teachings so that the world can be a kinder place um, that is more connected to the world around us and to each other. So, um, I, oh, so I thank you so much for uh, joining me in movement, and I hope you were able to receive um, something, I hope something awakened for you, either something that you remember that you might have lost a long time ago, or maybe a new connection with your body or connecting your body to stories of interconnectedness through this planet. So um, this is a good time to just breathe first and take in what your body has learned. There's an intelligence and a way of knowing that is in our bodies that sometimes precedes thought precedes knowledge, research from books, writing. Um, so if you just take a moment for that, and um, then if you would uh, like to move it into wordification, you can. Again, the company that I direct, my reason for, I think, I mean, I survived stage four cancer 20 years ago to give birth to Dancing Earth. That's the name of our company, Dancing Earth. Um, DancingEarth.org is our organization. We are actually touring, we'll be in Sedona, next week we were in durango last week we are uh one of our dancers came down with covid today so we are um really pushing ourselves to bring messaging to the planet in a safe way um because i believe that's what we as dancing earth are here to do so please share what yes please share what awakened for you thank you for all the gratitude that's been expressed Thank you so much, Rulan, for helping us uh, have this experience with you tonight. And yeah, I just want to invite folks, um, if you want to share, you know, one word, perhaps, or what, what awakened for you or a phrase, um, I'd like to just open up the floor and just maybe we could just take a minute or two and, and Quaker style, if anyone would like to share like a one breath kind of um how you're feeling if we have those words <laughs> if you want to dance it that's fine too but um yeah we just let's share a little bit as an educator this is how i learn you know so i appreciate any wordification you have hello i i would like to say something uh first of all like uh i want to thank you rulan so much and a hello for everyone um, from the morning time in Vietnam. Vietnam. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for the experiment. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know, like, I, I'm not practiced dance so much, but uh, since I, um, I believe that like own, uh, you know, like movement with uh, body movement with like all your hers and with your, your your body and the co well connection with your body they could consider as dancing so i i see many uh, 
um, familiar with my practicing in Aikido also, we think about the movement and we think a lot about the, the you know, the body, the energy, and also the connection to the nature and it's especially the, the, the way we connect to each other why we move, uh, not fighting tricks or in Aikido, even like people believe it, no, it is martial art, but it's more connect to the people and how to feel the, the energy with other. And the experiment today um, recall the, the memory of me. I don't know why, but now I refer to live in the forest instead of, uh, you know, like next to the sea, which I uh, wish to live you know, when I were teenagers or in my 20s, I don't know, like, would change, but in, in you know, when, when we think a lot about the movement, about the curve of the body and about the, the curve fly, so it, it, it revoke, it's recall in, in, inside of me about the, the connection with the seas. It's, yeah, the connection with the sea. So yeah, I love I love it so much, uh, yeah, and and thank you a lot. I don't know why. Maybe like after this experiment, I have to answer that question for myself. Why I uh, skip the seed and move uh, the, my thought to the, the the forest, you know? But why do doing that? So I feel like the, the moment, like how many moments in your life you connect to the natures and why you change your perceptions or you change to the way you perceive the world. Maybe some point you disconnect to your body and when you reach on it again through some experiment and while well, listening to your body, you reconnect it. And maybe today I have to answer the questions for myself. Why, why and when I, 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 I feel safe or uh, to live in the forest instead of the sea. Uh, uh, when, um, when, when I was trying to think a lot about the sea, but now I think more about the forest area. So I, I must uh, <laughs> answer that and thank you a lot for your uh, experiment today, uh, Rulen. Thank you. Um, that's such an honor to hear from you and your sense of place. So thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to give a chance for anyone who wanted to say a word or put it in the chat to be complete. But I also want to note that we are, it's 9.03 and I don't want to, uh, you know, go beyond our time, but um, too far, but a few more minutes. Would that be all right with everyone? For anyone else to share a brief um, a word or anything that so that you could be complete tonight as we get ready to say good night to each other. There's beautiful comments in the chat, Rulan. So we'll we'll make sure you get a copy of it. There's just my hair is snow cuffed mountain. Yes, on it. Yes, wondrous mm. life. Yeah, how nourishing it would be to always be aware of these movement connections as there are infinite connections. Yeah, you could be driving, you all stressed out, you'd be like, oh, we are the stars, we are all connected. You know, even just the flexion of like, I've been typing on you know, my computer all day and this is what my hands wanna do. And like, ah, seeds, spark. It's, they, the reminders are in our bodies. So hopefully I've given a couple little cues that can help you stay well in your incredible work in the world of visioning and reimagining. Absolutely beautiful. And, you know, everyone, let's check out the um, website. We really want to support you and your beautiful work and movement. Thank we you want so to much. I think there's a tip jar. I don't know what that, where it is, but uh, like, here's my empty water bottle. <laughs> and um, I think Sam had mentioned there would be a tip jar. I don't know how that works, but, um, yeah. you know, uh, Dancing Earth, uh, our website has a little PayPal or something. I don't know. Do you all know how that works, Bobby? Because I was yeah, Dave, about something. Dave, if you can grab that link and put it in, let's put that in. And you know, one thing I, I want to say is I really felt like you helped me understand how to learn with my body tonight. Yes. And that was so amazing. Such an amazing experience. It really was. You know, I, I just ha had not thought of learning like that and connecting like that. Me too. Yes, um, I think there's times, again, where we're like, my, I knew it in my gut. Like our body literally, there's things that our body knows before we can make a logical explanation for it. And it uh, looks like Ani's got something to say here. Yeah. 
So Ani, with a beautiful snow-capped mountain of hair, please share with us. <laughs> She's trying to get her audio. Oh, okay. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure you are all incredible philosophers and thinkers. And so, you know, that value of the mind, I know I appreciate mine, but um, my thinking mind is throughout my whole body. You know, that time when you're like, oh, you, you just got out of the way of something. You know, the, the, these things that seem coincidental or you're, you're drawn to someone in the street and someone that you knew a thousand years ago. Um, I really think that we can trust our bodies, the intelligence of our bodies. And uh, sometimes there's things that are beyond logic and reason, and then it becomes science. Science catches up. <laughs> yeah, and another, um, just one more connection I'd like to make, if it's all right, is the, um, um, the learning from the earth and learning it by, you know, becoming the corn and noticing what it's doing and the beans. Mm -hmm. squash like noticing what they're up to those three sisters supporting each other and thriving and you helped us like experience that in our using our bodies and that was amazing for sure um, i think that's you know how i used to call it indigenous wisdom but i think all culture has come from you know that kind of like getting to know your surroundings so every culture and um these days there's a great fancy term it's called biomimicry and it kind of breaks down, like learning from nature, especially now when we've maybe been disconnected from nature. And we're looking for like, how are we going to survive this mess? And uh, you know, there's 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 templates out there. Even what we're doing right now, it's called the web. Perhaps it's because it it is like the spider's web. And um, there's there's indigenous folks who said to me, you know, um, the idea of a binary code. It's actually in our original artworks. You know the the two colors of shell or the two colors of beads. And can we claim this as our own? It's not something you know, that doesn't belong to us. And even the idea of being able to transport imagery and words thousands and thousands of miles away, what used to be sort of psychic intuition, we almost have a version of it now with like immediate texting and having this Zoom experience. So mm. uh, sometimes it's reclaiming, uh, you know, there's a lot to like, feel depressed about and complain about and there's also a lot to celebrate and to reclaim so I hope we can do that through our renewed knowledge of our body and I, I do want to acknowledge some of the incredible artists who have, are part of the Dancing Earth Vision Laura Rios was on here before she had to go put her kids to bed she's an incredible uh, danza azteca uh, danzante azteca Antona, Antonella who is going to be trying to organize the Dancing Earth Retreat in Mexico. Olivia, who joined us this summer. So yeah, it's I'm, I'm a, uh, one body and my magic is uh, bringing incredible people together, including all of you. That is wonderful. Well, everyone, the website is in the chat. Also a place if you'd like to make a donation, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, and just thank you so much for your gift and for this time together. We really appreciate you. Thanks everyone for being here tonight and just creating a, an amazing gathering and um, just really grateful to be here with all of you. So, good night, everyone. And thank you so much. Thank you for more movement. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Roland. You're welcome. Good to see you. And um, for anyone who's loving this movement, they want to do more movement, usually once a month. So this is my November class, but once a month through Dancing Earth, you can just write to dancingearth.org. I misspelled it because I'm dyslexic, but info at dancingearth.org. Just say, I'd love to know about the classes and then we'll invite you. Um, they're at sliding scale. If you have no funds, then just bring your open heart. If you have extra funds, you can pay for a friend. Um, but I, I, I offer those usually around the full moon every month. And I hope to continue those so I can reconnect you, with you, Olivia, any of you out there. And again, it's this kind of class where it does, you, know, you can be at a high level of dance and uh, just learning how to sort of peel away to the essence of movement or, you know, ideally for people who also aren't involved in dance, who want to just be in their bodies more and have a chance to feel good in between the incredible things you're doing out there in the world. So these are open to you and uh, it's wonderful to expand my circle. I'm so grateful to see them spark, to Sam, to Bobby, to Dave for making this possible tonight. All right. Thank All right. you. Bye-bye.
Good night, everyone. Thank you. All right, Ani. Yes, thank you, Bridget, for remembering us about uh, being in the bodies and the innate movement. Bridget, you're the one that works with the little ones, right? <laughs> yeah. Like That's so. me. Good night. Yes. Thank you so oh, much. Good night. Good night. Thank Esme, you. thanks for coming. I know. Oh, there you are. There's Esme. She's one of our lead dancers. She was teaching at the high school today. So good oh. to see you. Thank you. Bye.